A question that I get asked a lot is what stones do I need for crystal surgery? And then people want me to give them a list of you need quartz and you need rose quartz and you need uh, citrine and you need epidotes and the they want me just to give them a list of the kinds of stones that are needed but in crystal surgery it's not only the kinds of stones but the formation the shapes of the stones other qualities of the stones that become very very important and i would like to begin here now by talking about clear quartz as opposed to the color quartz and explain a little bit about what to look for for in a crystal surgery stone when talking about clear quartz uh, and let's just start by looking at what's my book that I use because quartz does come in a huge number of different formations and I do use Melody's book the love in, is in the earth encyclopedia I have my glasses in here so I have to take them out and I just want to show you that she has 78 pages in this book about quartz and quartz formations and this is my go-to reference. She explains general properties of quartz and then goes through every formation that she was familiar with and writes about them in this book and this is where to look. It's no use asking me what are the properties because all I'm going to do is copy my teacher Melody and say look in the book. So this is the book if I say look in the book this is the book that I mean this is a laser wand and we know it's a laser wand because it's broad at the base and tapers to a point but this particular quartz laser wand has got another unique feature to it and that is the way the termination forms a little hook and in crystal surgery this is the kind of thing you really want to look at is what does the termination look like how can you use it as a tool and this hook is what works for me when I'm unbinding the heart or wanting to strip any kind of etheric tissue away from an organ or nerve. A, a hook like that is what I want to be working with and that is what is most appealing to me about this rather stunning and fantastic crystal that I did find in Tucson. So the termination, that is an important aspect to look at is the termination going to serve you as a tool in the way that you would like? We talk about the termination in crystal surgery as having an active point, and this particular Faden crystal has two active points, but one leads, and it's this one over here, the longer one, and that is what is meant by an active point. If we compare it with my other Faden crystal, which I'll bring in for you to see. This is a Faden crystal that truly typifies and explains the magic of a Faden crystal. The white line in the middle here, over here, that's actually the tube that connects you to the etheric dimension. And this is a magnificent example of the Faden white line in a beautiful clear quartz. However, this one the active point is too blunt for me and the work that I want to do. And therefore, I use this one when I need a Faden with an active point. Now, there's several ways in which we use Faden crystals. And so we also want flat, smooth Fardens that can be placed on the feet. And these are very, very smooth crystals, so there's no lumps and bumps and points and jagged edges that are going to cut into people. And the other aspect is to check that the Faden line is running the length of the crystal, because it is possible to get Faden lines that run this way, but then you can't use the crystal in the way that you want to. So you want to be very specific when choosing your Faden. Does it need to be smooth? Does it need an active point? Which way does the Faden line run? See, it gets quite technical and you do need to know what you're doing. And this is why I can't just give you a list. Oh, you need two Faden crystals and expect you to know what I mean by that.
Now, another aspect of a crystal is how well can you hold it? So we need quartz clusters for doing our sweeping work. And he has a gorgeous quartz cluster. But this is too big and it's too heavy. This is a display piece that will energize a whole home and it's not suitable for doing crystal surgery per se. So that's not such a good idea. For my sweeping action, I use this quartz cluster and those are the quartz crystals and the terminations. They all point in the same direction. I can turn it this way and everything's going to work together really, really nicely. Now there's some more special features with this one and we'll get to that later. So the way that you can hold the crystal becomes very important. And this candle quartz that I have exemplifies what I'm talking about. So there it is. You may think, oh, that's a grungy looking crystal. I cannot tell you the magic that I've experienced with this superior piece. And I will now demonstrate why. My thumb goes exactly into that spot. And my fingers go exactly onto the back. And so I have a perfect handhold on my quartz. And when I want to use it, it tells me exactly how to hold it. And if my index finger is lined up in this way, I can actually feel the etheric energy emanating from my index finger. It woke me up in the night, one night when I used to sleep with this crystal, and I could actually feel the sensation like heat rising off my finger. And it was if I hold this crystal exactly according to the handhold, which makes me think that it's an ancient tool that has now come to me to teach me, then I activate the crystal and get the best out of it. Now, there are many crystals with handholds. This little Colombian Lemurian has got a beautiful groove right here for my finger. I just put it in there and I have the perfect hold and now I can work with this quartz crystal. So that feeling of comfort, the, uh, the ergonomics of your crystal, very, very important in crystal surgery. If you're doing a lot of sessions, as I do, I want my crystals to be comfortable. I need them not to be too heavy. I need them to have enough mass that I can work quickly enough. And so these are all dynamics that I check on when I'm choosing crystals for myself. Another feature to look for is symmetry. Now this Isis crystal, which I have shown other times, and we want to make sure that the Isis face shows clearly. So this is the Isis face here. It's five-sided. It's totally symmetrical, totally even, and it's symmetrically placed in the middle of the crystal. Now this is easier to see if I give you a comparison. So here's another Isis crystal, and you can see that the Isis face is not placed symmetri symmetrically in the middle of the crystal. It's not as balanced. Now this particular Isis crystal, this one, has other properties because it's actually got an unusual termination. If I hold it to the side, you might be able to see it. And I think this is called a spade quartz. I'm not entirely sure, but it is an unusual and different termination that gives additional properties as well as the Isis. But for this particular conversation, I'm just showing what a symmetrical, perfectly placed Isis face looks like. So that is one of the things you do want to assess. There we go. They like each other. They're rolling in bed together here. Very good. The next dynamic is light in the crystal. So let's have a look at this Arkansas quartz crystal here. 
and it's a lovely crystal it has rainbows in it it's very beautiful but let's compare it to this diamantina and this is my diamantina that i use as a proxy crystal when doing remote work and you can see the difference in the light in the crystal and that is why this one is called a diamantina because it is bright like a diamond diamantina diamond in portuguese and this is an arkansas crystal doesn't actually this is brazilian material but it's not a laser wand remembering which vendor I bought it from. It's Brazilian, but it's slightly gray in comparison. And one of the things you want to watch is how the light changes in a crystal as you are working with it, because it's one of the ways that you know that the energy is moving correctly. And to begin with a light, bright crystal, very satisfying. And then to see it get brighter and brighter and brighter, it can be quite dazzling. I'm hoping I'm going to dazzle you with my next one. So let's just look at this brightness issue. These are two little Lemurians, Brazilian material. They're actually very nice ones. I hand select all my stones. Those are Brazilian Lemurians. And this is this amazing Colombian material that is coming out of Colombia. And some of them are, are more like Lemurians, like this one. And some of them are more like Diamantinas. And this particular one is like a Lemurian. But look at the difference in the brightness between these two crystals. Rather amazing. And uh, I love the sharpness of the points on both of these. This is just a beauty that is a teacher crystal as well and uh, I do love this stone particularly. Now there are other aspects and there are many different formations of crystals but I think it's important to talk about self-healed crystals because you can't uh, just find them and just buy them you need to be learn how to recognize them form an intention I need a self-healed crystal in my collection and then you can hope to get one and this is a self-healed crystal and what that means is that where it broke off from the matrix and where it was growing it has formed new terminations that are healing that end and this you can see is an Arkansas quartz this is from Arkansas we went to Arkansas and bought it there along with many other crystals and I love do love this stone beautiful channeling face over here and just a gorgeous self-healed termination on this side that is very quick and easy to work with because of the amount of self-healed area that we have so you can find a crystal like this that has some self-healing on it but you can see it will take very long time to move over somebody if you're working in person it will take a long time to use a crystal like this if it's self-healed versus this nice strong cluster that gets you working quite rapidly moving over the surface area you want to cover all right so we also get formations that have been man-made and one one such as vogel crystals these are genuine Vogel crystals made by Ray Pinto and this is my Vogel pair they've got quite the dynamic I like to use them Ooh, I can feel that I like to use them like so and then since it is crystal surgery I do need a very sharp point in this tool this is a Vogel style cut it was not made by the licensed artisan but somebody made a copy well, I can tell you this is the most extraordinary extraordinary tool I'm always looking for these long slender points and you can do all kinds of intricate and detailed work when you have a tool like that beautiful light in it 
beautiful carving, beautiful point. Finally for today, I'd like to talk about courts with inclusions. We can come back to our cluster and you can see that there's a green color in my quartz crystal. And what that green color is, is fuchsite, or you may be calling it fuchsite. It is after Herr von Fuchs. So fuchsite it is for me. This is fuchsite. And you can see where the green in it, green in my cluster, is also fuchsite. This is from Madagascar. This is from Brazil. <clears throat> so this fuchsite moves stagnant energy. And if I'm sweeping in crystal surgery, then having fuchsite included in my quartz obviously gives me the very best possible dynamic for clearing an energy field. And so I do like to find quartz with the appropriate inclusions in it. And that makes my day for sure. Then when I begin a session, I'll sweep with this beautiful cluster. When I end a session, I will sweep with this amazing cluster, which is two crystals joined together and then self-healed at the bottom here. This is all self-healed material. I hold the stone like this. This is a nice handhold here. So I can hold the stone like that. And then what's in here is some red. I'll hold the stone like this for the camera. There's red, which is hematite. So here's red hematite coating on my amethyst. And here's the underside, also coated. So the red inside this crystal is needles of hematite and then there are also green needles of epidote. And when I finish a session, I love to use this stone. It is very soothing and invigorating at the same time. Between the hematite and the epidote and the quartz and the self-healed terminations, I'm getting a wallop for the time that I'm using a wallop in the right direction to feel invigorated and confident and excellent. And so for some people, I will finish their session by sweeping through their energy field with this absolutely gorgeous gift from the planet Earth. Thank you.